Hello and welcome to McNulty's Book Corral. I'm your host, Thomas McNulty. I'd like to begin by explaining the purpose of this video series, which is about books, reading, and book collecting. I'm a lifelong avid reader and book collector, and in this series we're going to talk about a wide variety of books, westerns, mystery, science fiction, romance, pulp fiction, new pulp fiction. I have an episode where I'm going to talk about the plays of William Shakespeare. Um, we're going to try and cover everything. I have an episode scheduled for poetry, uh, a wide variety of poetry. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to be talking about book collecting as a related topic. Uh, I have a wide selection of rare books, vintage books, signed books, vintage paperbacks, comic books, etc. We're going to talk about them. We're going to talk about what's fun to read. What can you put in the hands of your family? What can you do if you have a bookcase in your house and you want to fill that bookcase uh, and put something in it for the family to draw from? Reading, in the past, used to be something that was um, part of our daily routine before computers, etc. Literacy levels in the 30s and 40s were rising, unlike today where literacy levels are dipping. Um, talking on your phone and doing this all right, that's not that's not reading. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about actually looking at uh, literature, understanding it, and so forth. So we have a lot to talk about. Now, today, this is the first episode, we're going to keep it simple. We're going to talk about Troy Nesbitt. And Troy Nesbitt is one of my favorites. Uh, he was a, a writer who did um, the World in a Series uh, in the 50s and 60s. And we're going to look at some of those. For example, the first the first Troy Nesbitt book in the world in a series, he wrote over 100 books, but we're just talking about a few here, five, was The Sand Dune Pony, which was published in 1952. Um, I encountered The Sand Dune Pony in the mid-60s when it looked like this. And this is probably the one that a lot of viewers out there will remember. This is, was published by Whitman. Whitman was based in Racine, Wisconsin. They were a publisher who did what the Pulp Fiction publishers did. They produced their books as cheaply as they could in order to maximize their profit. So they used a cheap pulp paper, and you can kind of see how brown this is on some of these. Uh, they didn't do a good job gluing these together. So the Whitman books from the 50s and 60s in really good shape are hard to find. In their collector's items. I do have an episode scheduled later where we're going to just talk about Whitman collector, collector's items. Today we're talking about Troy Nesbitt. So, Troy Nesbitt, if you remember Sand Dune Pony, this was from the 60s um, when books about horses were immensely popular. Troy Nesbitt's real name was Franklin Folsom. He was born in 1907 and he died in 1995. And as I mentioned, he wrote over 100 books um, we're interested in the, the series here today. We're talking about the Wilderness Mystery Series. They were unrelated titles, but they involved adventure for young people. So the Sand Dune Pony, I'm sure a lot of you remember that one. And we also had one of my favorites, which was the Indian Mummy Mystery. Um, a self-explanatory title. The young guy goes into a cave out west and he discovers a mummy and there are people looking for it and there's a mystery to be solved. The conflicts are always resolved by the young people using their analytical abilities. Um, they're literate, intelligent, capable young men and women. So the, the books were targeted for a specific audience. And they're just, just a blast, you know, just a blast to read. One of my favorites was the Diamond Cave Mystery that Troy Nesbitt, a.k.a. Franklin Folsom, put out. Uh, as a pre-teenager, I was fascinated by caves, and we would visit a lot of caves. Um... It, this sparked my interest in geology as well, and rock collecting, precious gems, and so forth were things that I was into as a, as a young boy. And um, this particular book deals with some of that. A lot of fun. Another great one is the Jinx of Pay Rock Canyon. Again, we have young people uh, on, usually on a vacation or something, or they discover something in the area and they have to overcome obstacles with adults, and but they have to do it in a manner that's generally not too violent either. Um, the focus was on using analytical abilities. So um, 
that stuff is all all right there uh the themes of uh solving problems and everything this was the target audience uh, at the time and then we had the forest fire mystery which was also uh, a popular title these were all bestsellers by the way in, in the 50s and 60s i'm showing you most of the um the editions from the 1960s and then the last one is the one that's a little controversial today um you'll note that on this one it involves uh, a young man holding a rifle during the 1950s and the 1960s it wasn't uncommon for young people to join uh riflemen shooting clubs they learned the basics of handling firearms it was an accepted practice in schools at the time no longer those days are gone however that doesn't mean the book um is propaganda for firearms it's not it's just a reflection of the times um franklin Folsom wrote during the 50s and 60s and 70s and he was uh, active politically in a lot of interesting things. Um, whatever that means, you can look it up. Um, interesting guy, uh, quality writer. And so we have these adventure books that are out there, again, published by Whitman out of Racine, Wisconsin. I'm sure some of you remember how these all look with the checkered look on it. Um, they're fun to collect. If you can find these in good shape, this one's in really good shape. Has a good spine. I have a double set of everything, and I also have some of the older ones um, here as well. For example, with Sand Dune Pony, I have the 1960s edition, and here's the 1952 edition um, right here. And this is really hard to find in good shape. Um, any of them are hard to find because, again, Whitman didn't do a good job putting these books together, but they made a lot of money. Whitman was one of the, the major publishers for young readers, along with Scholastic in the 60s. Scholastic is still around. Whitman is long gone. Um, so there we have a little bit of a view of books by Troy Nesbitt. They have been reprinted, so you can find them on Amazon. Now, I read somewhere on the Internet that they, there's a bit of editing that went on with the reprints. You'll have to look into that. I, don't, I haven't looked into those yet, so I don't know. So there we have it. So we're going to be talking about some other authors in the future. We're going to be looking at a lot of rare books. And as always, I thank you for stopping in. If you get a chance, again, check out Troy Nesbitt. And we're going to be talking about some fantastic books in the near future. So as always, stay healthy, feed your brain, read a book. Thanks.